You might remember the story about Boat, the brightest of all time, an insanely bright gamma ray explosion that was detected in October of 2022 and represented an event that potentially happens once every 10,000 years. An event so bright and so powerful that not only did it basically blind a lot of satellites and produce some of the highest gamma ray observations we've ever seen, basically being something like 50 to 70 times more powerful than anything else before, but this event also lasted much, much longer. A typical GRB only lasts a second or two, possibly even less. Only a few have been detected to last a few seconds, but this one lasted for approximately 7 minutes. And more importantly, was even detectable hours after the initial explosion. And because this is a GRB or a gamma ray burst, by nature, at some point, it started to produce additional observations in visible light, X-rays, and so on. And so it was actually visible to amateur astronomers using regular telescopes, despite being over 2 billion light years away from planet Earth. But out of all observations, the strangest one was the fact that it also affected planet Earth. This event was so powerful, it actually changed the ionosphere by increasing the atmospheric ionization quite dramatically and not just changing the amounts of ozone, but also triggering several chemical reactions that we don't actually understand very well. And so this event was definitely quite profound and quite powerful. One of the rarest and strangest cosmological events we've ever seen. Not like in a year or a decade, ever. This is literally as powerful as it gets, and I'm actually surprised more media did not discuss this as it's sort of mind-blowing. And well, hello wonderful person, this is Anton. Today we're going to once again discuss recent updates, and by the way, previous updates and previous discoveries you can actually discover in several videos in the description below. But today we're going to focus on one of the new observations using James Webb, and maybe one potential solution, but also like, I guess, two more mysteries, kind of. So yeah, the event itself just gets stranger and stranger. And I'm actually sure we're going to be discovering even more about this in years to come. But I guess one question that you might be asking, or I guess I was asking myself, is why did it take so long to even come up with these initial explanations? It's been almost two years now, or I guess like a year and a half when I'm making this video. And so what exactly took so long to provide these relatively simple explanations? Well, once again, it was the power of this incredible explosion. This GRB was so ridiculously bright that it was basically outshining everything around it, making anything in the vicinity invisible to us. Or, as the researchers explain it, it was like staring at the headlights of an incoming car and you just don't see the car at all. You don't even see anything around it, you only see the headlights. And so even six months later, everything here was basically just this bright dot in the middle. Here's by the way how it kind of compares to some of the previous very powerful explosions. And so because of the brightness of this event, it was impossible to detect anything else. And even the initial observations from the James Webb were just too bright and were oversaturated, so there was just no good data. The scientists had to wait some time for this to diminish and for basically all of this to become kind of visible. And months later, I think over six months later, they started to get some useful data. And specifically, they started to observe signs of the supernova that most likely produced all of this. And initially the scientists assumed that this would be the most powerful supernova we've ever seen, potentially from some kind of an extremely massive, very fast spinning star that basically somehow exploded, producing an enormous amount of energy. Possibly hundreds or even thousands of times more powerful than a typical supernova. But these initial observations from the James Webb, that you can kind of see right here, were very surprising or were not surprising at all, as in, it looked like a typical, nondescript supernova remnant. Nothing unusual, nothing super powerful, it literally looked like every other supernova remnant we've ever seen, as if nothing unusual happened here and no unusual star exploded at all. Yet they were absolutely certain that this was indeed the event that produced the most powerful GRB, so something here was not adding up. Or maybe it was just the explanation was not clear at first. Because what we observed was not the explosion in this case, but the emitted jets. And that's actually true for all GRBs. We're not seeing the explosion, we're basically just staring directly at the jets. Or I guess to kind of help you visualize this, we're looking at something like this. Now this is just a jet from a neutron star, but the overall idea is very similar. But in this case, 
it must have been the jets that were very different. Instead of being a little bit more spread out like in most GRBs, here they might have been concentrated and extremely narrow. And it's really that narrowness that potentially resulted in an extremely thin, very very bright jet that was then visible billions of light years away and lasted for an extremely long time. Now obviously right now nobody has any idea why these jets were so much more narrow than usual and why they seem to be so much more powerful, lasted so much longer and produced so much more energy than in a normal GRB, but whatever the answer is, this was definitely a super lucky event. An event resulting in a very very bright GRB, but in an absolutely normal supernova. Not extra powerful, not extra large, just regular and completely indistinguishable from anything else. So it was the jets that were special, and that means that the mechanism producing them was also very likely kind of different. And here the explanation is that, okay, maybe it was actually an extremely fast spinning star that resulted in a specific shape and structure of these jets. If the star was spinning rapidly, would the spin of axis basically be toward us? In theory, when the explosion occurred, or essentially when the core of the star collapses into a black hole, it would produce these powerful jets that launch at speeds of close to the speed of light, with the spin itself and potentially magnetic field around the star producing an extremely narrow jet. Whereas a star that doesn't spin as fast and maybe doesn't have as much magnetic field would produce jets that are slightly more spread out. Although here maybe some of the answers are also in the galaxy itself. In this case this galaxy seems to have a lot less metallicity compared to a typical galaxy where we found GRBs, and so the host galaxy could eventually provide us with additional answers. Since this galaxy seems to have signs of star formation, it might result in a production of different types of stars that we usually don't find in much older galaxies. Either way though, at the moment there is no direct answer. But as I mentioned there is an additional mystery. The mystery in regards to what this particular supernova did not produce. Because of the power of this explosion and because this was a fast spinning magnetic star, the researchers were absolutely certain that they're going to finally answer the question of where a lot of different heavy elements most likely came from. So things like gold, platinum and so on. Now we know that a lot of them do come from kilonova or essentially the collision of two neutron stars, but unfortunately these events cannot explain everything. Not enough of them have been detected so far to explain so much of everything around us or essentially so many heavy elements, and more importantly, in order to actually even produce this, it takes roughly a few billion years to produce a binary system with neutron stars that are about to collide. This is a really slow process. Yet we've actually detected different heavy elements in extremely early universe, so some of this stuff must have formed in a different way, and it was expected to be through events involving massive rotating stars extremely similar to what was just observed in October of 2022. Yet further analysis and a very thorough analysis using James Webb and using the method of spectroscopy, the researchers did not find any heavy elements. No gold, no platinum, nothing heavier than iron. And that by itself is a bit of a mystery. It means that there's maybe another process we're not familiar with that produces heavier stuff. And so even though approximately half of all gold and a lot of heavy elements on planet Earth most likely formed during kilonova when neutron stars collide, we don't know where the other half came from. In other words, this explosion did not have what's known as R process. You can actually learn a little bit more about this in one of the recent videos that talks about another exciting discovery. The video should be in the description below, but in terms of this detection, it definitely disproves this hypothesis and suggests that even spinning star supernova are not able to produce heavier than iron elements. Here's actually one of the first images captured by Fermi of this beautiful event. But it will definitely take many many years before we have all of the answers and I'm sure there will be more studies discovering additional things that might be even more surprising. But until those future discoveries, check out all of the previous videos about this in some of the videos in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.